HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Happy New Year and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with the latest happenings in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have the latest in Hiller Sports. The Hopkinton Public Library welcomed their newest staff member. And Matt Clark will get you up to date with the latest HCAM programming with our HCAM Insider. But first, this past week, the Massachusetts Department of Transportation hosted a public hearing regarding the Downtown Corridor project. At the hearing, they shared details about the project and took feedback from the public. Good evening, everyone. My name is David Shedd. I am the project manager for the project that's going to be presented this evening. I'm assigned to the roadway project management uh, section for MassDOT, which is located in 10 Park Plaza in Boston. I was directed by Chief Patricia Leavenworth to conduct tonight's hearing. The Massachusetts Department of Transportation started off the public hearing by explaining the details and background of the project. The notice of the hearing appeared in the Metro West Daily News on December 26, 2017 and January 2, 2017, and the Hopkinton Town Crier December 29, 2017 and January 6, 2018. A copy of the notice is included in the handout and will be attached to the final hearing uh, transcript. Uh, page 4 of the handout explains the purpose of the hearing, which gives us an opportunity to make a formal presentation of the proposed project and at the same time allows us to record your input regarding this project. Construction funding for this project is currently identified as federal aid with the Federal Highway Administration funding 80% of the total construction cost. Uh, MassDOT funds the remaining 20%. Uh, this pro this project is currently programmed in the FY uh, fiscal year 2019 um, program. The current total estimated uh, construction cost, engineer's estimate, is six million, approximately 6400000 This does not include any right-of-way acquisition costs. Right now, the design is expected to be completed late summer 2019. Construction is expected to be completed approximately 18 months after the start of construction. Residents then had a chance to address concerns or ask questions. I lived in this town in 1957, and I think I'm the only person in this room that ha was here in 1957. Um, and it's kind of ironic because my father purchased um, the corner of where CVS is today in 1955 from the town of Hopkinton. So it's kind of funny that two years later the town of Hopkinton decides that's when they want to do um, the offset intersection and fix it. They owned it. So if they wanted to do it, they should have fixed it then. Um, so I, I kind of find that study hard to believe that um, that's what was planned, but I just want to set the record straight there. Um, I worked at that intersection for 45 years and nine months, quite a bit of my life. Um, I live downtown. Um, pretty close to where this is all starting. Um, as a retailer, one thing I learned, the most important thing is convenience for your customers. You have to have enough parking, you have to be convenient for people to get in and out of your shop quickly and easily. And parking, we were very um, lucky to have 129 parking spaces. We had the majority of parking downtown when we were in business for 70 years. So I, I agree wholeheartedly with the gentleman who is trying to rent his um, his space for a restaurant for two years you can't do it if you don't have parking so I feel sorry for these businesses that um, are not going to have parking in front of them Phipps insurance um, the um, yoga beach uh, there's there's five of them um, the barber correct 
I'm not gonna, it, as a person going to the library, I hate to tell you, but those 40 parking spaces in St. John's, I'm not gonna park there and walk to the library. I'm lazy and I'm in good shape. Um, so I, those parking spaces that have been replicated aren't gonna help anybody. I don't think anybody can safely cross Main <coughs> Street, even with the way you've got it planned, because you're crossing four lanes to get to the barbershop from the police station. So thank you for trying, but I don't think you succeeded. Next thing is not to um, the Department of Transportation, but for our town officials. I ask you to focus on acquiring land and building off street parking. Downtown needs in the central part, when I'm talking about right around the library, town hall, we need off street parking. This is particularly important because the parking spots that are being lost, and I understand that we have a lot of parking spots that the length of them you can't even fit a car in without over because they're not standard and, and I understand why we're losing spots from a visibility and safety standpoint but we are losing some spots also the construction will cause uh, a lot of spots to be lost during the construction period the town officials need to make it a priority to get this off street parking which is sorely needed done before we start the construction in earnest and we're now getting onto a very short timeline. You can view the full public hearing at our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAMPTV. The Hiller winter sports season is well underway. Recently, Hiller hockey, as well as girls and boys basketball, came up with huge wins. Here's a look at the latest highlights. The 4-1-1 one one Hopkinton Hillers hockey team took on 4-2-1 Dover Sherbourne on Saturday, January 6th. It was scoreless until in the second period, Will Abbott changed that. That one had goal written all over. That was a good, nice save job by Britt. And oh, there's a goal not. from the left circle. Will Abbott turns it around and laces it in, in the right side, top corner. And then about a minute and a half into the third, Will Abbott strikes again on a beauty of an assist by DJ Sloan to make it two to nothing Hillers. And then later in the third with just less than 10 minutes left, Owen Delaney on a break. Delaney racing up, an opportunity here, two on one. Delaney wrists it, and that's a goal! Three nothing Hillers, Owen Delaney squares off with Aiden Britt and wins the battle. Real great play by Simon out there, just doing that exact thing, chipping it right off the boards, hitting Delaney in stride, sending him on a two on one. The goal makes it three to nothing Hillers and that is all they would need as they come up with the four to two victory over Dover Sherbourne. Will Abbott puts up two goals and DJ Sloan with three assists in the victory as the Hillers improved a five one and one on the season. On Friday, January 5th, it was a Hopkinton Medfield Girls Boys Varsity Basketball doubleheader at the Hiller Athletic Center. First quarter, some great passing and a great feed to Reagan Kevney, who feeds the basket 4-3 and puts the Hillers up 13-4. That is how the score stayed heading to the second. Medfield trying to score in the final seconds of the first half. Lily Morningstar says, no you don't, intercepts the pass, runs the floor, and takes it to the house for the final bucket of the half. Hillers led 25 to 10, heading into the locker room. Third quarter, Regan Kevney strikes again as she takes a great pass from Kate Hubner and translates it to points to make it 38 to 24. 38 26 was the score heading to the fourth. Medfield closed in a bit in the fourth quarter, but the Hillers took care of business at the free throw line and held on for the 45-35 win. Ivy Goglin put up 14 points, and Regan Kevney hit for 13 as the Hiller girls improved to 7-1 overall. Before the girls took the court, the 2-5 Hopkinton boys seeked to grab an upset win over Medfield. Brent McKenzie misses this three, but Sasitsky grabs the rebound and dishes it out to the emerging junior Ryan Kester who knocks it down to put the Hillers up eight to nothing. Hillers led 15 to eight after one. 
second quarter, the Hillers continue to knock down the threes. Michael Pavakad hits from three-point land to make it 24-13 Hillers. And then Puvakad does it again towards the end of the half to make it 32-19, and the Hillers would lead 32-22 heading into the halftime locker room. Third quarter, Zach Sasitsky had a nice drive to the bucket to make it 45-35 Hillers. It was 44-37 heading to the fourth. The Hillers continued to shoot very good in the fourth. Ben McKenzie knocks down this three to make it 53-42. The Hillers pulled off the big upset as they take down Medfield 65-57. The Hopkinton boys are now 3-5 overall with the huge win. Coming up next on HCAM News, you'll meet the newest staff member from the Hopkinton Public Library. Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider plus a whole lot more you won't want to miss. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Hi, my name is Margie Wigan, and I want to invite you to join me for my new show, Character Matters, on HCAM. We're going to talk about why do people choose the behavior that they choose? Why do they choose to be good? We're going to hear from people in history, we're going to hear from local heroes who make great choices, and we're going to hear from some puppets who talk about things they've seen, and they're going to say, what? Did you see that? Yes, I did. Please join us. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. Welcome back to HCAM News. Newly appointed director of the Hopkinton Public Library, Heather Backman, has been very busy over the last couple of months. After officially opening the newly renovated and expanded library building, she welcomed in the newest member of the staff, adult services librarian, Jesse McCarthy. Recently, I had the opportunity to get to meet Jesse and learn a little bit about her background. Can you uh, talk a little bit about your uh, background and then uh, how you ended up in Hopkinton? All right, I don't, I don't know how far back you want me to go, um, but I was an undergrad anthropology major, um, which actually lends itself very well to librarianship, but I never really considered libraries as a career um, until I actually worked in one and found out what librarians do <laughs> every day. Um, and so I started bringing my daughter to actually story times in Peabody, and from there uh, joined the staff uh, with a young adult librarian opening. Um, moved to reference, um, worked in Salem for a while doing reference and circulation, and then my family needed some help back in where I grew up in Southbridge, so we moved back. Um, I started working at the Holland Library as the director there, um, which was completely different experience than working reference, you know, leading the whole library. Um, and then I graduated in May of 20, last year, May, um, with my master's from Rutgers. And, um, you know, this is a really exciting time for the Hopkinton Library, and I was looking for something full-time, and I was looking for something back in reference, and that's what led me here. All right. Can you talk about what uh, your duties will be as an adult services librarian? A lot. Um, I'm doing collection development uh, for the adult like ordering all the books and movies and um, nonfiction for um, adults in the community. Um, I'll be doing programming for the adults in the community. I will be doing reference and local history um, research. So that's the big three kind of. All right, and lastly, uh, what's it like to be working in this beautiful new library? It's amazing. It's a beautiful building. If you haven't come see it, come see it. Um, come see me down in the reference area. And um, but yeah, it's a gorgeous building. It's it's perfectly located um, right in the center of town. So come see us. 
Welcome to town, Jesse. We are glad to have you here. The end of 2017 was a pretty busy time in town. In the last couple of months, we watched several Hiller sports teams compete in the playoffs, followed the school committee through the process of selecting the next school superintendent. The official opening of the renovated and expanded library took place, plus a whole lot more. For those of you that missed it, here is more on some of the recent biggest happenings in town. The school committee held a special meeting Monday night. Topics included the budget and voting for the next Hopkinton school superintendent to take over for the retiring Dr. Kathy McLeod. The new superintendent will officially start on July 1st, 2018. That this is somebody that, that the staff members in the district really have bought into as a leader and where we are as a district right now, I think one of the things that we need to be cognizant of is we have a very, very talented leadership team and we want to keep as many of them as possible. And so that was really powerful for me as well. I've really, with the exception of Mary Colombo, who I also had the pleasure of working with, I have never seen anyone so, um, so enamored of and conversant in MCAS data and all data. I mean, she just, for an English person, particularly Jen, as you said, her, her ability to um, use data to inform what, what we're doing is really exceptional. So and the selection for the new superintendent was current Hopkinton assistant superintendent, Dr. Carol Cavanaugh. Okay, all in favor? Yes. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. The Tenando Hopkinton Hillers took on the Tenando Melrose Red Raiders in the Division Four State Semifinals. Two minutes, two forty-five left. Heller in the shotgun, back to throw. He has time. Going deep, wide, wide open. open for Will Abbott. He's going to take it in for a touchdown for the Hillers. Here we go. Hopkinton gambling early here in this game. Four for two. Heller under center. Hands it to Abbott, who throws a pop pass in the end zone, and that is going to be caught by, looks like, Linquist. That was Linquist. And the gamble pays off for the Hillers, and they take an 8-7 lead. Hillers remained up 8-7 at the half. The Melrose offense put together another long drive to start the third quarter. A little bit of a different formation here as Stanton goes under center. He gives it to uh, Seed who bounces left and he is into the end zone. Here we go for the extra point. The handoff is to Seed. He takes it straight into the end zone, almost untouched for the two point conversion. Then later in the quarter, Isaac Seed finds a big hole in the Hopkinton defense. Kind of like Doherty. He was. Here we go, Melrose, handoff to Seed, and he breaks one. And he's off to the races, Don. He's going to take it in for the score. Wow. Melrose never looked back after the two third quarter touchdowns. The game would end by a final score of 22 to 8. They serve to the back row. They go back set to Wang. And that's it. Wang with the uh, thunderous kill and now mobbed by the team. <coughs> so Newton North takes the third set 25 23 for a 3-0 sweep of the Hillers. Congratulations to Newton North. And congratulations to the Hillers, too. I mean, it was a phenomenal season. Yeah, it really was. They got nothing to be ashamed about. I know this one hurts. I know it's heartbreaking. There's nothing worse than losing a division, uh, one state or any state championship, rather. Yep. But they have uh, everything to be proud of. They really had a tremendous season. and. So much talent on this team. What a job Coach Grabmeyer did. Necessary ingredients for our perfect library. Dedicated patrons, our amazing staff, and now this fantastic building. So Libraries are the cornerstone to a free society of well-educated citizens. The spirit of that is captured in the words of author Toby Forward. Civilized nations build libraries. Lands that have lost their soul close them down. The friends of the library, the staff, and town officials. This new building is a collaboration of the community. It not only takes a village to build a library, but a lot of support. And you've got that support from the citizens and taxpayers and those that tear up the fundraisers. 
who along with the state provided the funding. Absolutely nothing makes the Mass Board of Library Commissioners happier than awarding a construction grant and seeing that grant, in this case, $4,533,000 come to fruition. Inside the Library now offers so many more resources than before, including more materials and state-of-the-art technology. More importantly, this space offers what is most important to our community, space for people to gather, including a spacious event room, bright and cheerful children's room, a welcoming young adult room, technology classroom for adults and children, conference rooms, study spaces, and so much more. Welcome to your library. Let's make it a great one. It feels great. It's uh, it's gratifying. We've been so happy to that the public has been so um, supportive and enthusiastic. So it feels great. Excellent. We're proud. Um, what do you think about the result of this new space? Uh, I think it looks absolutely beautiful. And I'm very happy with it. I love it. I love it. I'm very happy. The Johnson Roberts Architects did a fantastic job. They've worked with us for years now, going back to 2011, and have. Um, taking care of every detail. All right, well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for coming. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is HCAM's promotions coordinator, Matt Clark. Hello, everyone. Happy New Year, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, January 12th at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers boys basketball team takes on the Bellingham Blackhawks, live on HCAM Ed. On Monday, January 15th at 7 p.m., poet, photographer, and playwright Kelly Dumar shares her writing and photography on a brand new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. On Tuesday, January 16th at 5 p.m., the Hillers boys basketball team takes on the Ashland Clockers, followed immediately by the girls basketball team at 6.30 p.m., live on HCAM Ed. And at 6.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Board of Selectmen's meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, January 17th at 7 p.m., Margie and Lisa are back and invite you to join the conversation on a new episode of The Margie and Lisa Show, live on HCAM TV. On Thursday, January 18th at 10 a.m., Senior View is on the road, live on HCAM TV. And at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton School Committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And on Friday, January 19th at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers girls basketball team takes on the Holliston Panthers, live on HCAM Ed. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers swimming versus Natick game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website to view pictures and videos from throughout our community, and also to stay up to date with upcoming events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and may your 2018 be a great one.
For the 20th consecutive year, Elmwood hosted the annual swearing-in ceremony for their We Deliver program. The program allows students to learn what it's like working to operate a post office. The program helps build skills, teamwork ability, as well as other applicable experiences which relate to the real world. Principal Ann Carver explained the program at the ceremony. So today is a We Deliver ceremony, a swearing-in ceremony. As I've already said, has a 20-year tradition, and it's, this program is offered in other areas, I believe, around the country. Uh, it's not specific to Elmwood School, but it's something that we've been doing here for a long time. And there's a pretty rigorous process to be a part of um, the postmaster position. So I, standing beside me uh, is Carl Sagami, who's the postmaster in Hopkinton, and we mimic our procedures a little bit uh, after the, um, the procedures that happen in real life. And so if you decide you're in third grade and you decide you want to be a postmaster, this is what happens. You, mostly what happens. You indicate to your families that you'd like to be considered for postmaster, and we set aside a day. This happened right before Thanksgiving. Come on. And everyone who got scored a perfect score on the written test was advanced to the next stage of our procedure. So then folks came back um, on a second day to write an essay. And the title of their essay, for kids who scored 100%, was Why I'd Make a Good Postmaster for the We Deliver program. And um, so students submit their essay to the office. We take the names off the essay because we do not want to be swayed by um, knowing who wrote what. And then we share the essay with volunteers, staff members who volunteer to read the essays. And they get sort of ranked one through, depending on how many kids, I think nine children um, scored a perfect score this year. So the essays are ranked, and the top four are chosen as um, postmasters. Hopkinton postmaster Carl Zagami swore in the postmasters as well as the rest of the student participants in the program. Sophia Zanella, Enzo Rupucci, Acadia King, Maggie Flynn, 